Hello everyone and welcome to Alan Technologies presentation on VLANs in Dreitech Vega switches. This is the first part of our three part webinar series covering VLANs in Dreitech products. For those of you who haven't uh, seen me before, my name is Java and I'm a technical sales specialist at Dreitech Australia and New Zealand. Here's a quick outline of what I'll be uh, covering today. First up, I'll introduce the concept of a VLAN and look at the different type of VLANs and the configuration options that are available. These would of course include the PVID, tagged, untagged and forbidden VLANs. We'll uh, discuss what happens to a data packet based on the mode selected, along with a detailed discussion of the four different VLAN mode options available in Dreitech Vega switches. Uh, these include the access mode, uh, the trunk mode, hybrid mode, and tunnel mode. If you have any questions during the video, simply comment in the chat box that's on the right side of your screen. And uh, do stick around at the end for a five minute Q&A session. And if you're watching this after the live premiere, please comment below or send an email to sales at dreitech.com.au. Okay, so it's time to begin. Let's start off with an introduction to VLANs. Now, if you were to look up the definition of a VLAN, it would read a virtual local area network or VLAN is a logical group of workstations, servers and network devices that appear to be on the same LAN despite their geographical dispersion. Uh, the VLAN information is in the layer 2 header of an Ethernet data packet. It is 12 bits of data between the type and source MAC address sections as you can see in this diagram. So in other words, a VLAN is a group of devices that are physically on the same LAN as other devices but separated from them using information in the Ethernet packet and they don't necessarily have to be all together in one place. Um, some of you look after large networks which may have uh, IP cameras, IP phones and so on in addition to your PC data network. You will find that uh, if all of these devices are installed in a flat network you will soon see network congestion resulting in slow network response times as well as poor phone call quality. The solution then is to separate each of these services by using VLANs. Using VLANs will allow you to segregate your network and prevent devices in one part of the network from getting access to other parts in the network and vice versa. VLANs allow you to segment your network by function or by application. Unicast, broadcast and multicast packets are forwarded and flooded out ports in the same VLAN. This also enhances the network performance since broadcasts and multicasts are not sent to other parts of your network. VLANs also ease network configuration by logically connecting devices without physically relocating those devices. Now, here you can see a typical application of VLANs. On your screen, you'll see four local area networks. Uh, these are the administration, sales, support department, and the warehouse. The devices in each of these LANs could be in different locations within the company, but are logically part of the same network. Now that we have a basic idea of what a VLAN is, Let's look at the different types of VLANs and the configuration options that are available. As shown in the screenshot from the Vega Switch 2500, we have a number of VLAN options. These include PVID, tagged, untagged, and forbidden VLAN. Now let's talk about what happens to the data packets based on the VLAN option selected. Uh, we'll break this down into three stages. Ingress for data packets coming into the switch, inside the switch, and uh, egress when the packet is leaving the switch. PVID refers 
to port VLAN ID. This is added to untagged ingress packets. And once inside the switch, such data packets are forwarded to VLAN member ports. For tagged VLAN, the switch ports will only accept data packets that have a matching VLAN tag. Once inside the switch, these packets are forwarded to VLAN member ports. Egress packets will retain the VLAN tag. Next, we have the untagged VLAN. Here, any data packets entering the switch port will have the VLAN tag information removed on egress from the switch. And the last VLAN option is forbidden VLAN. Here, any incoming data packets with a matching VLAN tag will be blocked from the switch port. Let's take it a step further and look at the example on screen. In this configuration, we've selected ports GE1 to 5, PVID is set to 15, and we've tagged VLAN settings of 1, 16, 17, and 20. Forbidden VLAN is set to 19. And from such a configuration, we can draw the following conclusions. Uh, first being that the untagged ingress packets will be tagged with VID 15. The tagged ingress packets with VID 15 are not accepted by ports GE1 to 5. Tagged ingress packets with VID 16 are accepted by port GE1 and port GE4 will not accept tagged ingress packets with VID 19. Now there are a number of VLAN mode options that are available in Draytech Vigor switches. I'll uh, go over each of these in the next few slides. The different VLAN mode options are available under the interface settings menu in the switch. There are four interface VLAN modes as highlighted here. We have access mode, trunk mode, hybrid mode, and tunnel mode. First, let's look at access mode. This mode is used to connect general devices which are VLAN unaware. These include PCs, printers, file servers, and so on. Uh, such devices do not add a VLAN tag to their data packets. As shown in this diagram, the switch using access mode can be connected to a router's LAN port without any VLANs configured and all devices connected to the switch will access the internet. Access ports refers to those switch ports that are set up in access mode. For this, we just need to configure the PVID. In the example that we have here on the screen, the PVID is set to 20. So a device connected to the switch port will be able to communicate with any device on VLAN 20 within the switch. Now, here's a bigger switch that's set up with two PVIDs. You can see PVID 1 in red, and uh, PVID 10 in green. On the left, we have data packets that are coming into the PVID 1 ports. Only untagged packets are accepted into these ports and any tagged packets are dropped. In this illustration, we have packets 1 and 10 going to the bin at the bottom. And for outgoing, that is egress packets, the PVID is removed and all outgoing packets are untagged. I'll now show you a demonstration of access port functions using the topology shown here. The router is connected to the internet as well as the Vega switch. We have three VLANs that are configured in the router. Uh, VLAN 1 is untagged. LAN 2 is the voice VLAN with a VID of 20. And LAN 3 is the surveillance VLAN with VID 30. The PC will be connected to the bigger switch and is on VLAN 30. The router we are using is the Vega 2927 LAC. 
We have three VLANs configured in the router, LAN 1, LAN 2, and LAN 3. Port P5 on the router is also the VLAN trunk connection to the bigger switch. LAN 1 has been set up with no VLAN tags. LAN 2 has VLAN tag 20, and LAN 3 has VLAN tag 30. Since the Vega switch is connected to port 5 of this router, we have to click on the VLAN of this port. Now we go to the web interface of the Vega switch 2540X. The first step is to create the VLANs. So we go to the switch LAN menu and then go to VLAN management. Now select create VLAN. We've created two VLANs here, 20 and 30, in addition to the default VLAN 1. We've also configured ports 31 to 36 as access ports. Access ports only need to have the PVID configured to allow devices connected to these ports to only have access to this VLAN. This means that any devices connected to these ports will only have access to the VLAN with a tag of 30, which is LAN 3. LAN 3 has the IP subnet of 192.168.30.1. The PC is connected to port 32 of the Vega switch, which is configured as an access port. So it should obtain an IP address from the router within the 192.168.30 subnet Running IP config on the PC shows that it has obtained an IP address of 192.168.30.12, which is part of LAN 3. Okay, uh, let's talk about the next interface VLAN type, which is trunk mode. As shown in the diagram, you can have a single 802.1Q VLAN trunk from the Vigor router to the Vigor switch trunk port. This trunk port will allow multiple VLANs to be sent over a single connection. Here we have the staff and guest VLANs from the Vega router being made available on both Vega switches as well as the access point. The trunk ports are being used to interconnect the switches as well as the access point. As a result, a single connection is required between the Vega switches to allow all the VLANs to be available. Now here's the configuration menu in a Vega switch. First, we select which port we're going to use as the trunk port. Here we've selected Gigabit Ethernet port GE1. Next, the interface VLAN mode should be set to trunk. The PVID also needs to be entered to allow VLAN unaware devices to be placed in a VLAN in the switch. The tagged VLAN setting for this port will only accept tagged VLANs from member tagged VLANs. And egress packets from the trunk port will also retain the VLAN tag. Now here's a diagram to explain this further. We see two switches that are linked by trunk ports configured to allow three tagged VLANs and a PVID of one. On the bottom switch, we have tagged VLANs 10, 20, and 30 shown in red, purple, and green. The switch management is on PVID one and is displayed in yellow. Uh, looking at the egress packets from the trunk port on the bottom switch, we can see that the tag packets retain the VLAN tag information. Packets from the yellow VLAN, which have PVID of 1, will have the PVID removed and sent as untagged packets. Also, any tag packets uh, that are not allowed on the trunk port will be dropped. On the ingress side of the other switch, untagged packets are accepted and inserted with PVID. Tag packets are accepted, provided they're from VLAN members. 
So devices on uh, both the switches within the same tag VLAN will be able to communicate with each other through uh, the trunk port. Let me quickly demonstrate the trunk port through the same network topology I used earlier. Port 1 on the VIGA switch is connected to the router, so this will be our trunk port. And we have to set up tag VLANs 20 and 30 on this port. Port P5 on the router is also the VLAN trunk connection to the VIGA switch. LAN 1 has been set up with no VLAN tags. LAN 2 has VLAN tag 20 and LAN 3 has VLAN tag 30. In the VIGA switch, we have set up ports 1 to 4 as trunk ports. We've set up tagged VLAN 20 and 30 for these ports and also have PVID 1. So any VLAN unaware devices connected to one of these trunk ports will be part of LAN 1 since it's untagged. The next interface VLAN type is hybrid mode. As the name suggests, it's like a combination of trunk and access mode settings. The port in hybrid mode is used to connect different types of devices with several identical VLANs. Uh, these devices can be VLAN aware, such as a router, a switch, or an access point or be VLAN unaware, such as a PC, mobile phone, or printer. Hybrid ports are used when the device connected to the switch port may require access to different VLANs based on different situations. For example, a device with different MAC addresses will be connected to this port and will access different VLANs. Uh, that's the MAC VLAN feature, which I'll cover later. Uh, this mode is also used when the switch port has to egress packets to different untagged VLANs via a single physical link. Let's take a look at the configuration menu in the Vega switch. Uh, first, we select which port we're going to use as the hybrid port. Uh, here we've selected Gigabit Ethernet port GE38. Also, the interface VLAN mode should be set to hybrid. The PVID also needs to be entered to allow VLAN unaware devices to be placed in a VLAN in the switch. The tagged VLAN setting for this port will only accept tagged VLANs from member tagged VLANs. And egress packets from the trunk port will also retain the VLAN tag we can also add untagged VLANs to this port. Egress packets from the hybrid port will retain VLAN tag. If it is a tagged VLAN, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, tagged, uh, the VLAN tag is removed for uh, untagged VLANs. Now, here's a diagram that illustrates how tagged and untagged packets ingress and egress through the hybrid ports. On the ingress side, untagged packets are accepted and a PVID is inserted. Tagged packets are accepted if they are from VLAN members. On your screen, you can see tagged VLANs 30 and 40 being accepted, but data packets with VLAN tags 10, 20 and 1 are dropped. Talking about the egress side, the packets from the hybrid port will retain the VLAN tag if it is a tagged VLAN, while the VLAN tag is removed for untagged VLANs. Now here's a handy little table that uh, compares between the trunk and hybrid modes. As you can see here, the hybrid mode adds uh, more flexibility for VLANs and traffic types. Uh, you can pause the screen or just uh, keep a screenshot for future reference. Uh, this brings us to the next interface VLAN type, which is tunnel mode. Uh, tunnel ports are mostly used in ISP networks to segregate the traffic of different customers. 
It's typically used for multiple protocol label switching or MPLS, layer 2 VPNs. Essentially, we have uh, all the selected VLANs on one switch being sent to a remote switch over a trunk connection that encapsulates the VLANs inside another VLAN. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as Q in Q trunking. In the diagram on screen, we have four VLANs, that is 400, 600, 1500, and 2600, which are encapsulated in the ISP trunk connection. Here's taking a look at the configuration menu of the Wigger switch. Uh, first up, we select which port we're going to use as the tunnel. Here we've selected Gigabit Ethernet ports GE1 and GE2. The PVID will need to be set and uh, this has to match the PVID of the remote site. This will be the VLAN you want the customer side to gain access to. And all the packets that uh, enter the ISP network via a tunnel port are treated as untagged packets. So ingress packets are tagged with PVID, which is also called outer tag or a service tag. So data packets will have two tags, which are then forwarded. Um, here's a diagram that illustrates how tagged and untagged packets ingress and egress through the tunnel ports. Looking at the ingress side, all packets are accepted and are tagged with the PVID, which will be the service tag and forwarded. In this diagram, we have VLANs with PVID 11 for company one and PVID 22 for company B. PVID 11 is allocated to VLANs 400 and 600, while the PVID 22 is allocated to VLANs 1500 and 2600. The data packets are forwarded to the remote switch and the PVID is removed from egress packets, retaining the original VLAN tags. Now here's some uh, information on the Q and Q, which is based on the 802.1Q standard. Uh, this allows two VLAN 802.1Q tags insert to a single packet with a capacity of uh, 4096 times 4096 VLANs. Uh, this enables customer VLANs to be sent within the ISP provided VLAN. This way, the service provider can just configure one VLAN for the customer and the customer can then treat that VLAN as if it were a trunk. Okay, um, we've discussed uh, quite a few different scenarios today and uh, I've prepared a summary of each combination of each interface mode and the VLAN type. You can pause the video here to take a look at the details and uh, perhaps even keep a screen grab for future reference. When deciding which interface VLAN mode to use, you will need to look at the type of device that's being connected and their function. Access mode, which uses untagged ports on the switch, is used to connect VLAN unaware devices, such as PCs and printers. The trunk mode is used to connect multiple tagged VLANs to another switch or router over a single Ethernet connection. The hybrid mode is recommended when you need a combination of tagged and untagged port access. And finally, the tunnel mode is used when connecting the switch to another network over the internet. As uh, I mentioned earlier, this method is used by some ISPs to segregate data traffic for different customers. All right, so in summary, Today, we not only introduced the VLAN concept, but also talked about different uh, types of VLANs and the configuration options. We saw what happens to a data packet based on the mode selected, along with a detailed discussion of the different VLAN modes that are available in Draytech Vega switches. 
Okay, that's it for me, but uh, please do stay tuned. Staff will be answering questions in the live chat on the right of your screen for the next five minutes. For more information about Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au or send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au or give us a call on 0298 Don't forget to like and subscribe below. And if you'd like a notification of new premiere videos we're about to launch or anytime we put up a new video, please give the bell a click as well. Thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it and I do hope you found the session informative. Until we meet again, goodbye.